We have another uh, presenter in this session, uh, Andrew Griffith, as you see there. And if you go to the next slide, I'll introduce Andrew. Andrew is the director of the Independent Project Analysis Institute, IPA Institute, as you see there. And he has been at IPA since 1997. He's also got uh, uh, other research, uh, other involvement in academia. He's an adjunct professor at George Washington University in Washington, DC. Uh, his areas of expertise are project execution planning, project planning and scheduling, project systems evaluation and re-engineering, civil and building projects, construction safety, constructability reviews and training. And uh, he has worked uh, for the US Army, Army Corps of Engineers. And he also has uh, degrees uh, from Clemson University and the University, University of Texas at Austin, where he got his PhD. So uh, welcome, Andrew. And Andrew's going to give us a, a little uh, snippet of his research related to driving superior construction safety performance and how it should begin early. So if you want to roll the, the video there, we will hear from Andrew. Hello and welcome. My name is Andrew Griffith. I'm a director at Independent Project Analysis, or IPA for short. What I'm going to be doing with this presentation is sharing with you a fundamental relationship concerning construction safety performance that IPA has been seeing for years in our database. I thought that this relationship and its implications would be of interest to this workshop because it really ties another mechanism or another practice that clearly helps drive better construction safety performance and would certainly fit into any prevention through design thought process or implementation. So my I've gotten the data that I'll be sharing and, and how I use the data to draw the uh, relationships and conclusions that I've drawn. Then I'll very briefly uh, show you the sample that I've collected of capital projects that I use to demonstrate this fundamental relationship. And then in the, the third section, I'll actually lay out the correlation between a practice we call front end loading or a project definition and how that the level of definition or the application of front end loading strongly and very significantly correlates with improved levels of construction safety in the execution phase of a capital project. And then wrap up with a um, single slide of some fundamental conclusions or takeaways. So IPA or independent project analysis, we're an um, independent project management benchmarking and consulting company. And as it says on our slide, the mission is to conduct research into how capital projects and project systems actually function. What are the first principles that help explain better project performance from poor project performance? And we apply the results of our research to really help coach our clients, our customers, and to changing their project systems through continuous improvement to really um, develop more effective capital assets as part of their business. Now, we achieve this mission really in a different way. We do empirical research using a normalized database that we have been building over 35 years where we collect and normalize based on currency and other factors and use these databases to be able to build fundamental benchmarking metrics to help companies understand the relative performance, as well as research identifying best practices. And all of this is then used for helping our clients do quantitative um, project assessment, risk assessment. Now, methodology is unique. I've said a couple times already, data and databases. The method is we, as part of our work with each client, 
we interview and collect a great deal of data about each individual capital project in various stages during the project life cycle. And the data include cost estimate and schedule targets and scope of the projects and a myriad of other data that we collect as part of this data collection. Then we normalize the data by controlling for currency and inflation escalation so that there can be an apples to apples comparison when we conduct research. And as I said, the fundamental question of our research is what practices can we empirically show correlate and drive better project performance? Now, what is better project performance is multidimensional. It could be cost, schedule, it can be predictability, and it can be safety. So once we completed this research in various ways and over different periods of time, we transfer this knowledge via benchmarking, evaluations and reports, et cetera. And it's a continuously improving process where every project evaluation we conduct is fed back into the database and to help enrich the database and keep things current, picking up on more current trends and seeing where the industry going and identify additional or multi dimensions to our best practices. So as part of the, our data collection interview process, we interview project teams at various stages in the life cycle of a project. If you're unfamiliar with this kind of a chart, the first three segments are really elements of what we call front end loading, or many call it pre-project planning or project definition. Most of our client organizations, industrial capital project kind of owner companies break their front end loading into three distinct phases. And so as part of our benchmarking, we will collect data at the key junction points in this three phased front end loading process. Now, I want to emphasize one point. It's that third stage, the authorization point. That is when we meet with project teams and collect the final amount of information prior to the project beginning execution. And usually this authorization gate is when a company, an owner organization, would give full funds authorization to a capital project. And typically that's after they have completed front end, in, front end engineering design or feed prior to starting detailed design. So that's a key anchor point is that authorization gate. Then we also interview the projects and collect the actual results of the project after mechanical completion. And we use those to be able to make a look back and say how well did the project perform relative to its targets, as well as how well it performed relative to objective external benchmarks of similar projects in the industry that have been completed. So this is our data collection process at various stages in the life cycle, most importantly at authorization, and then again at closeout. So that's IPA. So the relationship that we have seen over the years is a relationship between that, that front end work, how well that work is done in the front end, and the ultimate results of a project, how successful they are. And in particular to this workshop and community is how that front end work is related to and drives construction safety performance, meaning the safety results as measured by traditional outcome measures, you know, lagging indicators of safety around recordable incident rate or in uh, DARTs, days away job restri restriction, job transfer incident rates. And so what I'm doing with this study is I've collected a particular sample of projects and I'm going to share that sample and show you how the data support that correlation between front end and ultimate safety performance. So the sample I collected for this particular analysis is a sample of spanning 20 years. Projects were authorized from the year 2000 until just recently, just a year ago, 20, 2021. 
The average year of authorization in this particular group of projects is 2009. And in total, I have 3,000, about 3,200 completed capital projects in this sample. Now, the estimated cost of these projects normalized to $2,022. As you would expect, a majority of them are in the lower millions of dollars, 10 million to 25 million. I cut it off at 10 million. So from 10 million to 25 million, about 32% of the projects are in that size range. But a fair number of projects are also larger in the 25 to 50 million, 50 million to 200 million. And we even have a fair number of projects over 200 million individual projects that are part of this database. And on the left, you can see that the projects come from a wide range of industry sectors, but all heavy industrial type of capital projects. Chemicals industry and refining, they make up almost 60% of the sample. That's the bulk of our, our data sources. But we also have projects for mining minerals and metals, distribution, which is primarily pipeline, pharma, which is the manufacturing of pharmaceuticals or laboratories, and then consumer products, as well as other kind of industry sectors. But the message is the data are spanning a long period of time, wide range of project sizes, coming from a wide range of industry sectors, but all heavy industrial capital projects. So in this sample, one of the things we always collect at the end of the project is how well it performed in terms of construction safety. And we use traditional lagging indicators, as I had said, uh, the DART incident rate and the recordable incident rate as our two key safety performance metrics. And what I wanted to show with this chart is not only what the average incident rates are for my sample, which are a DART incident rate of uh, 0.35, that's 0.35 incidents per 200,000 hours, and a recordable incident rate of 0.89 per 200,000 hours. But I wanted to illustrate how the sample of projects that I work with, with large owners, with well-established safety programs, their overall safety performance as a group is far better than the overall U.S. construction industry safety performance as reported by the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics. So I'm already starting with a sample of projects that have a better than industry, in fact, significantly better than industry safety performance. But I still want to use the data to understand what explains better or worse safety performance, or what helps explain better or worse safety performance for my sample of 3,200 heavy industrial capital projects. So the fundamental question then is, if I have an example, a sample of 3,200 projects, and I know their individual project safety performance, you know, the incident rates, the total number of hours, field construction hours, and other characteristics of the project's results, what are practices that may help explain better safety performance from worse safety performance? And the one that I'm going to be exploring in today's discussion is this concept of project definition or front end loading or some, you know, call it pre-project planning, but how that front end loading or front end work correlates with better safety performance. So I need to define front end loading. And, and as it says on this slide, front end loading is this the early project planning work or the project definition work. It is that early work when a project team is translating a business case or a business opportunity into an actual scope of work that can then be executed in design, procurement, and construction. And so that translation then is set up where we are completing the scope of work and the project is then ready to execute. So it's that front end work of translating the business case into a scope and then preparing that scope for effective execution. And that's what we, in a large sense, refer to as front end loading. And it's a lot of effort that goes on to this work phase, and it's a critical part of projects. 
And so we at IPA look at it as I'd shown in an earlier graph. We break it down into three major elements or stages. And this isn't the forum or the, the environment to go into the details of each phase, but those three together make up this fun and loading phase that, as I'd said earlier, ends with that formal authorization by the company for a full funds authorization to actually begin detailed design, procurement, ultimately construction, commissioning, and startup. But the amount of work that goes on in those first three phases is critical to the success of capital projects. Now, part of our work then is we evaluate at the end of that front end loading work at that authorization gate, part of our benchmarking work is to measure the extent to which front end loading work has been completed. It's fundamentally saying how much of the work that industry should perform during that front end work did this each individual project actually perform? And we measure it on what we call our front end loading index or FEL index. And it's really designed, it's a non, you know, non, um, doesn't have particular measures. It's a, it's a uh, measure of the level of definition for a specific project. And, and we use it, it provides a relative measure for benchmarking how well projects are prepared. And it can be used to help idea or identify a best practical range or a target at authorization. And we reported on this descriptive scale. There's a numerical underlying measurement system that, that we use to help place where a project falls into that sequence of best, good, fair, uh, poor, or inadequate. And that's how we report how much effort or how much work had been completed in preparing a project prior to beginning full execution at the full fund state. And so the components of the FEL index are broken down into these three major categories. <clears throat> how, to what extent have site factors been clarified and developed in advance of authorization? Information around the local environment, uh, local materials availability, plot plans, have they done soil borings? Uh, what are the environmental permit requirements? And have we even submitted perhaps some of our environmental permit applications? And to what extent have we done our health and safety requirements investigation and even completed has op design reviews? The second category is engineering status. And it's what you would expect. To what extent have we completed some feed work, the front end engineering design work? Is our scope complete? Have we completed heat material balances? What is the stage of our PNIDs or piping and instrumentation diagrams? Have we finished all of our major equipment selection and specifications? So we're in a position to know the equipment dimensions and how they fit on our plot plans, all with good input by the various critical components of operations, maintenance, and business. And then finally, project execution planning. To what extent have we completed our contracting strategy, procurement plan, turnover sequencing planning, our commissioning and startup planning, and have we built a critical path resource loaded schedule, developed a bottoms up type of cost estimate, and, and really have initiated the ready to operate operational readiness type of programs. So we have criteria for each of these that goes into a scoring mechanism to determine a front end loading index or score. Now, in my sample of 3,100, you know, almost 3,200 capital projects, this is showing where the, the average FEL index fell for these projects at their authorization. And they fell within the kind of the fair category, in the middle of the fair category, with a standard deviation of 100. Some projects were better defined at authorization. And unfortunately, a, a fair number of projects don't complete nearly enough of that work that they should complete based on our research prior to authorization. So given this information about 
you know, what do we know about the de level of development of the primate loading? And earlier, I had shown you how we know the safety performance of projects after the project was completed. The basic research question and the basic relationship that I'm exploring is to what extent is there a correlation? To what extent is there a relationship between this measure of how well a project is prepared in its front end development, prepared for execution, and the ultimate safety performance measured in outcome safety metrics of recordable incident rate or DART incident rate. <clears throat> the hypothesis being that doing a good job of preparing a project puts it into a stable environment, minimizes the risks of disruptive changes, and is also representative of an organization that is disciplined and in a position to carry out the execution in a good oversight and control that would lead to superior safety performance during the execution. And the end result is, yes, there is a very strong and significant statistical relationship between the level of definition in measured in the front end loading index or the FEL index at authorization and the ultimate safety results of the project as measured by incident rate per 200,000 hours. So here on this chart, you can see there's a line that shows this relationship for the recordable incident rate on the top in orange, and another line showing the statistical relationship for the DART incident rate. And obviously those two incident rates are very strongly correlated because of the way they are actually overlapping to some extent. But the point of this graph is that the relationship between the level of definition and authorization of capital projects and its ultimate safety performance, which may not even begin construction for a year or two years after it's authorized, depending on the size of the project, there still is a very strong and significant relationship between definition and ultimately construction safety. So right there, we have a best practice related to capital projects that has a significant and strong direct correlation with better construction safety. Now, when I look at the data in more detail, I can see even in more granular because the relationship that I showed on the previous slide correlates overall construction safety performance with that overall definition and authorization in that single metric, that FEL loading index. But there are two particular elements within the FEL index that is the main driver of this relationship. When you break it down statistically or do you know, some sort of more detailed statistical analysis of the elements of front end loading, the level of development of the project execution plan, which you may recall are things around the level of definition of the schedule, how well and defined is your contract strategy, your turnover sequencing, your commissioning and startup plan, your design plan, how well are those comprehensive plans and detailed schedules developed as we get to authorization is one of the strong leading indicators of ultimately construction safety. And it makes sense because a well-developed project execution plan sets a project up for a more stable execution, fewer changes, chances are your targets are reasonable given the plan and the workforce that you're working with, and you're in an environment where during execution, you're able to focus on the work and stay safe as opposed to hurrying up and reacting to frequent changes or finding yourself in a very tight schedule pressure. The other element that correlates strongly within front end loading is the level of development of the health and safety requirements, how well they're understood and incorporated into the feed design. And traditionally in a chemical or refining or other heavy industrial process project, this is reflected in whether or not a full HAZOP review was done on the complete or near complete P&IDs 
as we completed the fee process. And again, this makes sense because incorporating comprehensive health and safety requirements into the front end design is a reflection of a focus on safety, a capability of bringing in your operations and designers to take a comprehensive look at the project from a safety in terms of hazardous operating environment early so that it creates a more stable environment for the design and construction and reduces the likelihood of late changes driven by health and safety requirements. So these are the two elements that strongly as subcategories correlate with better safety performance. So why am I presenting this? What's the conclusion for the participants in, in, in our workshop? Well, look, as my title of the presentation indicated, you know, construction, superior construction safety performance begins early in a capital project. It's not a matter of, you know, pointing together your safety plan as you're leading into the field for construction. It begins much earlier than that. Industry data from our robust definitions of front end loading, the better the project is defined in that front end phase, it directly and strongly statistically drives better construction safety performance in the execution phase. And, and this level of definition and authorization in our particular model is measured by the FEL index. There are obviously other ways of looking at that front end work, but this is a, a very universally used and measured index in our database that is a convenient tool for measuring the level of preparedness of a project and authorization and correlating it with construction safety. So, you know, for the participants to in this workshop of prevention through design to really be impactful and implementing the practices and the things that you're going to be learning about from the other presentations, there needs to be an early setup. Project teams need to complete the definition and prepare the project for execution at the early stages prior to authorization and the start of detailed design so that you can get the full advantage of other practices and other tools that you'll be learning about. This front end definition helps ensure the scope is complete, minimizes late changes, and ultimately provides a stable basis for the detailed design and execution and a stable basis for the application of other principles in prevention through design during the design and execution and construction phase. So it's, it's another element of this whole overall practice of driving better performance. And in my case of this study, construction safety performance through the early setup of the project and stabilizing the environment for sound, safe execution and construction. Thank you very much for your time. And as you see on this slide, if, if you have any questions or would like to reach out to me, my email is shown there, agriffith at ipaglobal.com. And I look forward to uh, meeting you in the breakout or engaging you in any conversations or questions around the research and the data that I used in this, in this particular study. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew, a wonderful presentation and, and a wonderful example of, of how to use data and show that uh, we really need to start early. And uh, early, early means right when we uh, develop the idea for the project and, and authorize it. So thank you very much.